I'm going to show you guys how to solve this differential equation, and this is how we're going to end up with the answer on wall function alpha. So check this out. So here we have dy dx is equal to parentheses with x minus y and a plus pi and a square, right? Notice that we have the x minus y here. So this is technically a differential equation in the form of g of ax plus y. And typically, we'll just let another variable say v to be x minus y only. But if you want to end up with the answer on wall function alpha, this is what we do. We are going to let v equals to the entire inside, which is the x minus y plus phi. And once again, this is how we are going to end up with the answer of wall function alpha. And if you want to end up with the answer in the back of the book, check out my other video, okay? Let's continue. This is the punchline, right? So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides. And you will notice, once I include the plus phi here, it doesn't really matter because the derivative of phi is going to be zero anyways. All right, the derivative of x is one, and then minus the derivative of y is just dy dx. And now let me move things around. Let me move this to the left hand side, and let me move this to the right hand side. So we will have dy dx equals to one minus d, d, dx. And then I can plug in this for dy dx, so we will have one minus d, d dx, and that will be Parentheses inside is phi, the entire inside is the phi, so we have phi and then square like this, right? And now let me move things around again. I want to make the phi dx positive, so let me move this to the right hand side. But let me write that down first on the left hand side also. It will be uh, d dx like this, okay? And I will have to move this to the left hand side, but I'll put it down on the right. 1 minus, right, because this becomes minus, 1 minus v squared, okay? And then you see, this is separable now, and I will just go ahead and divide both sides by 1 minus v squared, and I will end up 1 over 1 minus v squared, and then dv, and let's multiply the dx on both sides as well, so we have dx on the right-hand side. All right, you know, we are going to integrate, integrate, right? And to integrate, 1 over 1 minus v squared we are going to use partial fraction first, right? Let's factor out the denominator. This right here is going to be 1 plus v times 1 minus v. So you know, this right here is going to be something over 1 plus v, and then we add it with something over 1 minus v, dv, and then we have the dx. Okay, to figure out these numbers, this is what we do. We can use the cover R method, right? I want to figure out the number that's on the top of 1 plus v. What I do is, I go back to the original, looking at the factor form. I'm going to cover up the same denominator, okay, the same denominator. And you have to ask yourself, how can you make this factor that you just covered it up? Zero. Well, this is 1 plus v. To make this equal to zero, v has to be negative 1. Okay, so you cover this up, and you have to remember, v has to be negative 1, and you are going to plug in negative 1 into this v, okay, into the rest of the v's. So once again, you get 1 over, and then you do 1 minus negative 1, okay, you let v equal to negative 1. 1 over 1 minus negative 1, it's the same as 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 2. And to figure out this number, this is on top of 1 minus v, so I go back to the original, I cover up the same denominator, and how can we make this equal to 0? v has to be 1, right? So I'm going to plug in 1 into this v this time, and we will have 1 over 1 plus 1, which is once again 1 half. So this is what we have. And before we integrate, let me just multiply everything by 2 so I don't have to deal with the 1 half on the left hand side, okay? So we will have 1 over 1 plus v, and then this is plus 1 over 1 minus v dv, and this is equal to I multiply the 2, so we have the 2 dx like this. And now we can go ahead, integrate, integrate, and then you will see this is going to give us ln, right? ln absolute value 1 plus v. And you have to remember to check the derivative. The derivative of 1 plus v is just 1, so dividing by 1 doesn't matter. Next one, um, the integral of 1 over 1 minus v is, once again, ln absolute value 1 minus v. 
But in this case, the derivative of 1 minus v is negative 1. So right here, we have to divide by negative 1. So it's a subtraction now. And this is equal to 2x, and let's add a constant. And I'm going to keep track with the constant. So let's put it down plus d1. OK, two logarithms, and you see uh, this is subtraction, so I can put this over that. So this is ln absolute value 1 plus v over 1 minus v, like this. And this is equal to 2x plus c1. And then, of course, let's try our best to solve for, for v. So let's do e to this, e to that. And you see this is absolute value 1 plus v over 1 minus v. And this is equal to e to the 2x is the function part. So let's write it down, e to the 2x. And then you have to multiply by e to the c1. c1 is a constant, e is a constant, e to the c1 is also another constant. So let's put down c2 right here. And then next, get rid of the absolute value. Be sure you put down plus minus. And now we are talking about 1 plus v over 1 minus v to be plus minus c2. It's just another constant. So we put down c3 right here, e to the 2x like that, all right? And in fact, in this case, we can solve for v. So we'll go ahead and do so. Let's put down uh, 1 plus v here because I want to multiply 1 minus v on both sides. So you have 1 plus v equals to c3 e to the 2x times 1 minus v. And of course, right here, we can distribute. So let me just go ahead and distribute that for you. 1, minus, 1 plus v equals to this times that, which is c3 e to the 2x. And this times that, which is minus c3 e to the 2x, v. And now here's the deal. Do it carefully for you guys. I'm going to move this to the other side so that all the v's will be together. Here v, here it will be positive c3 e to the 2x, right? And I'm going to factor out the v, so I put on the v at the end. So we have the 1 and that. This is going to be 1 plus c3 e to the 2x. And as I said it, I'm going to factor out the fee, uh, put it down at the end. This will be, I will put a 1 to the other side. And let me write this down as a negative 1 plus this c3 e to the 2x, like this. Okay? At the very end, as you know, we can divide both sides by this. So we'll do so. Finally, we see phi, which is by itself now. That's great, right? phi will be this over that, which is negative 1. And I forgot to tell you, uh, this is how we are going to do it if you want to end up to be the answer in the uh, on Wolfgang Alpha, right? So let me just write this down as c3 um, e to the 2x minus 1 over, let me put down the c3 e to the 2x uh, and plus 1, like this, OK? OK. We're pretty much done. V is that. Put this back here, isolate the Y, everybody happy. But remember, you want to end up with the answer on Wolfgang Alpha. So this is what you do. So before I substitute V is equal to this, let's do the following. Uh, I'm going to look at this, right? And we'll do long division. Because on the top and bottom, we do have e to the 2x right here. They are pretty much the same thing, right? So it's almost like the degree are the same when you have a rational expression, that kind of idea. So let me put this down on the side here for you guys. This is the long division that we'll be doing. Top goes inside. So we have the c3 e to the 2x minus 1. And then we have that, which is c3 e to the 2x plus 1. And then uh, compare the first term, I need to just have a one time, right? One times this is exactly c3 e to the 2x. And then when you do this times that, which is minus 1, or plus 1 at the moment, 1 times this is plus 1. But when we do long division, we subtract. This and that cancel out, and then negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So after the long division, even though this is not polynomial over polynomial, we still do the long division, OK? Anyways, phi, um, which is the same as that. So let me just don't waste time. This is x minus y plus 5. And this is equal to this right here is that, right? So let me write it down for you guys. 1 is the quotient. So let me put this down, which is 1. 
And then we'll have negative 2 over the original denominator. So we have minus 2 over the original denominator, which is c3 e to the 2x and then plus 1, just like this. At the end, as I said, we are going to isolate our y, right? So let's go ahead and do so. And let me just put it down right here, perhaps. Uh, let me just isolate the negative y first. Well, actually, no. Let's do this again. Let me bring the y to the other side, which becomes positive y, but I will write the y down first, so it becomes positive y, all right? So I move this to the other side, become positive y. And then I will have to move this to the other side, isn't it? So uh, perhaps I'll, yeah, I'll just show you, show you guys the work right here, if you guys would like. I'm just adding a y on both sides, right? Adding a y, so that they cancel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do minus 1 on both sides, right? So that this and now cancel. But I'm going to add this on both sides as well, plus 2 over c3 e to the 2x plus 1. And I'll do that, of course, on both sides. I'll put this down as plus, and I'll put a 2 in front 2 over c3 e to the 2x plus 1, like that. Okay. Fair enough, I'll show you guys all the steps, isn't it? That's good. So why? It's by itself on the right hand side because this and that also cancel, but I just put it down the left. On the other side, um, on Wolfgang Alpha, they put on this first, so let's do so. 2 over c3 e to the 2x and then plus 1. Okay, this is a 2x, but it's better to look at this. And then plus x. And then 5 minus 1 is plus 4. Alright, so we are done. This is pretty much the family of solutions. And we are done with this. Of course, C with a subscript 3 is not needed. We can just say this is the legitimacy I want to use to present the answer for you guys. This is it. <laughs> However, uh, on Wolfgang Alpha, I'm not sure why they divide the top and bottom by 2. And they make it 1 over uh, C, another C, right? <laughs> and then you have the plus 1 half. But I think this is prettier, okay? I think this is definitely way prettier. So this right here is the family of solutions. And let me just write this down. Family of solutions. And once again, let me just show you guys um, word from alpha right here. And yes, it is 10 p.m. I'm still in school. But anyways, you can see that I type in this right here, which is that differential equation, right? And then you scroll it down right here. This is the answer that we have on Wolfgang Alpha. And you see that we have the 1 on the top on Wolfgang Alpha, but add the 2. All you have to do is just divide everything by 2. And you end up with this form right here, isn't it? And of course, you can go ahead and click on the step-by-step -step solution. And it's going to take some time. And the interesting thing is that if you click on the step-by-step -step solution, it's going to show you another form for the answer, which is this right here. And this is pretty close to the answer in the back of the book. I will show you guys how to get that in the following video, but hopefully you guys can all see this right here. And yeah, you can of course download this and play around um, on your own as well. All right, this is the family of solutions and we're pretty much done, right? However, there's one solution that does not belong to this family. Right here, the family of solution means that you can pick any value for c, and that's all the possible uh, solution to that differential equation, right? However, let me just write this down. There is a missing solution, and it is the following. It is y equals to x plus 4. And once again, this is missing, and you may be wondering, hey, we have the x plus 4 already, but the deal is that, well, no matter what you choose for c, this whole thing cannot be just x plus 4. Okay, right here, this is c times e to the 2x. The only way to get rid of the e to the 2x is by letting c is equal to 0. But when you have c is equal to 0 here, you have 2 over 1, which is 2. Plus x plus 4, it's altogether x plus 6. Right? This right here, you can never end up x plus 4 from the family. So this is what we mean by a missing solution. And let me demonstrate real quick, this is in fact satisfying the differential equation. So looking at this, we can differentiate both sides. We get dy, dx, which is just 1 on the right-hand side, right? 
I'll plug in this and that into the original. So you will see, we'll check one, uh, which is the dy dx. Is this equal to uh, x minus y? So let's put this down, x minus the y, which is this, right? x plus 4. And then we have the plus 5 after that. So let's put on plus 5. Square. So this is 1. And this is equal to x minus x is 0. And we have negative 4, right? Plus 5 is 1. And the square, 1 square, of course, is 1. It works. So you see, this function, x plus 4, it works for the differential equation. But no matter what you choose for c, this part right here can never give you just x plus 4. And you may be wondering, OK, how did the I end up with x plus 4? Is it just from this? Maybe. But another way to look at is when you are at this stage. You see, whenever you have a differential equation that's separable, which is right here, right? What we did from here to here is we divide both sides by 1 minus v squared. And you know that's bad because we shouldn't be divide functions because sometimes you miss solutions and things like that, right? Um, so here's the deal. Whenever you divide uh, the 1 minus v squared or whatever you have in the denominator, you are going to check is this and that a solution to the original differential equation. So let me do the check for you. First part, I'm going to set 1 plus v to be 0 to see if that's going to give us a solution to this or not. So let me work this out right here. Right? So if I let 1 plus v, which is the denominator here, and technically I don't want it to be 0, because if it is 0, maybe I'm losing a solution. So let's see. 1 is just 1 plus v, which we set it to be x minus y plus 5, right? So we have x minus y plus 5, and this is equal to 0. And let me just move the y to the right-hand side, but I will put down the y first, okay? And you have the x right here, 1 plus 5, which is plus 6. Is this a missing solution? Well, this is not a missing solution. In fact, this right here belongs to the family because what we can do is you can just let c equal to 0. We talked about it earlier, right? If we let c equal to 0, plug into here, you end up y equals to 2 over 0 plus 1, right? Because you have the 0 times e to the 2x plus 1 and then plus the x plus 4. So on all, this is y equals to x plus 6. This is not missing, it's in the family already. This guy is the missing child. <laughs> and to get that, we are going to look at this, 1 minus v, and then we set it to be 0. 1 minus v equal to 0. 1 is just 1, minus just a minus. v is, once again, that. So we have the x minus y plus 5, and then we set this to be 0. And you see this is 1 minus x plus y, minus 5 to be 0. This time, I will keep the y on the left-hand side. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Put it on the other side, becomes positive 4. Negative x, put it on the other side, becomes plus, right? So we have y is equal to x plus 4. And this is how we can find okay, a missing solution. And you have to just check. This right here is not in the family, and it also works for the original uh, differential equation. Therefore, if you want to complete your answer, you are going to have the family along with the missing child. And that's it. Hopefully, you guys like this.